So hi there, welcome to lesson four in module three. We are still looking at data creation and preparation. Now I want to talk about a special set of multiple choice variables. This also causes confusion among even um, more advanced users. So I'm just going to go straight into the form I had shared, you know, the data collection form. And it looks like this. I've already shared this, uh, I think, two, two lessons behind. But I'm going to zero in on this on that area that we had for sports. So in this form, you are allowed to take all the sports that you like. And I'm sure you must have done that. Same thing with meals, you know, where you're asked to tick uh, the meals that you like. Sometimes you are asked to, to tick um, uh, what you would prefer movies you would prefer and you know you like probably more than one movie so when you are making your choices you're not restricted to for example gender where you say yes or no in this case or the example right in front of us you could like volleyball and tennis your friend likes tennis and football and you have another friend who likes all of them or probably another friend who likes none of them so bottom line is uh, people will have different responses and the way it is being captured in data is a bit um, interesting so it's very important to know how we do this so basically it's either i pick volleyball or not table tennis or not uh, lawn tennis or not or football of course i'm required to take the ones i like so let's not take so much time let's look at this form closely zero in on the on the form and um, let's say, for example, one particular person liked volleyball and lawn tennis. When he filled the form, these were the only two sports he liked. The third fellow picked table tennis, lawn tennis, and football. Now, when we put all their responses together, respondent one picked volleyball and lawn tennis. And then respondent three had three favorite uh, sports. He plays football, table tennis, and lawn tennis. So the way it is being captured in data is in a in a binary form. But I'll, I'm going to get there very shortly. So basically, I did I just removed the x's and put one. All I'm just saying is that everywhere there is a one, you are interested in that sport. Now, because it's binary, anywhere there is no one. Uh, the natural assumption is you are not interested. So that's why it has this um, one zero combination. So anywhere you see a one, I'm interested. Anywhere you don't see one, I am I'm not interested. So that's going to be a zero. So one is interested, zero is not interested. So basically in multiple option questions, whether it's a meal you like or a movie you want to watch, it's either you are interested or not interested. So basically two responses. But across the data set, it will look something like this. Now, to uh, just go a bit further, it has what we call uh, a label definition. Remember, we did that in the last lesson. So the only thing we try to do here is just to add yes or no. And all I'm saying is that there is a there is a defined label called yes, no. You could call your own yes and no, whatever you want to call it. But basically, we're just saying that when there is a zero, it means no. When there is a yes, it means one. Or the person is interested, or the person participate, or the person is favorably disposed to that. So remember this all there from ticking boxes. So every box that was ticked is one. Every box not ticked is zero. So, and it has the same principle. I told you before, you cannot label a, a variable with values except you are defined. So when you define, like you find in the first two lines, then you label. So we'll take this in a practical session to just to illustrate. And I'm very, very sure it's very clear when we're in the practical session. So I hope this helped and see you in the practical session shortly. Thank you. So hi there, welcome to lesson four. I hope it has become so exciting and you're getting a lot of value from these videos. Please don't forget to like, to click on the notification button and to share, share, share. Share with your colleagues, share with your subordinates, share with your students, share with anybody who will benefit from this. Uh, so let's go on straight into the, um, the multiple option variables. So there are dummy variables 
or countries. So this data is basically tourist membership data. It has the the date, the past passport of these tourists will renew. And then there's a member of Syria, which is the last column, and the countries they have visited. So member one has visited Spain, Germany, Norway, and France. He has not visited Italy and Belgium. The same thing with number 15. He has visited Germany, Italy, France, and Belgium. Two countries he has not visited, Spain and Norway. So, you know, we have people like that. I don't know how many countries you have visited, but this is how the data looks like. So basically, it's either you have visited or not visited. So the goal is to uh, define some label. And this label, I try to call it exists. So it has in line seven and line eight, where one means yes, zero means no. And I want to attach that label, which I defined to the variable called Spain. So that's all I do. I click here. So if you look at the Spain variable now, we now have yes and no. But technically speaking, so there are many ways of going about this, you know. Uh, the long way, the short way, I'll just try and show you. So I could add extra lines here. So I add one more line. That's one way of going about it. And call this Germany. So, and then I go on and add all the layers and lines. It will work because the syntax talks about var list. So it works. I'm going to go uh, like that. And there may be reasons for that. So it's quite difficult to explain that now if you wanted to do several lines. But I understand if you don't understand. But I'll just take it nice and slow. So when I select all these now, including Spain and Germany, and I run the do file, you will see that Spain and Germany now have uh, the labels. So that's how you do it for uh, multiple option labels, just that they always have a value of one or zero. Now, you may not like the yes, no thing. It may not really be your kind of thing. And that's also fine. So what you do is you create not, I mean, visited, not visited. That's also fine. It's, you're the one defining what the label is. And whatever you call the label, that's its name. So if I said not visited here and I run again, this is what I get. So you see Spain visited, not visited, visited, not visited. And you can now apply that to all the other countries. Now, because it is var list, you may just want to use one line. So I'm going to show you some tips and techniques now. So I can select Spain, hold my shift button down and move it down to Belgium. And now we have selected all the six countries in Europe for this data set. And I click on Control C, which is copy or right click. I say copy var list. Let's copy these six variables. And then where there is Spain here, I paste. So when I do that, everything except the last expression, which is exist, is a variable. And you are saying Spain, Germany, Norway, Italy, France, and Belgium should take the label exist. And exist has been defined in 7 and 8. So when I run it, again, let's see what happens to the six countries. So all of them have now been turned to blue. There is no black. So that is how this works. So recollect. So when you have that, and this only works when Spain, Germany, or a group of variables share the same kind of options. Please note that when they share the same kind of options, all six countries were dummy variable uh, countries. What I mean by that, they had either you pick a zero or a one. So I was able to apply. But if there were some variables that had options of one, two, and three, or three and one, or two and three, then you can't lump them together. They must have the same option structure. They don't need to have the same response, but they must have the same range of options, which mean the same thing. So all these things will be stretched where we try to give you tasks and assignments to do. So it's just important that I emphasize it now. 
So basically, this is how multiple option works. You can change your definition. It does not always have to be yes or no. So depending on what the client wants, depending on what makes it clearer for you, you know, just do what is best. So this is all basically part of data preparation. And by the time you start doing your data preparation, things will start turning blue, things will start turning black, things may start turning red. Colors will change and move. A few minutes ago, at the level of just definition, we had blacks. But when we were done with everything, we don't even have any black again. So this happens when your data is being prepared. So basically, this is how it works. So I hope you have been able to gain something. Please don't forget to like. Please click the like. If you have loved what you have seen today, like this video. Please share with your friends, your colleagues, your subordinates, your students, anybody who has had a tough time understanding how Stata works. You may be able to explain to them, but maybe not as detailed as this. So I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.